It is highly probable but that this that that in the past, despite all of his actions, racism would have kept this man out of this house. Today, we can thank the Lord above. We are Americans and that we live in a nation where wrongs are righted, where justice matters, and where truly anything is possible. For O.J. Simpson is going to prison. Welcome to Monday Night Live at the LaPorte Church of Christ. This is a pre-inauguration party, and we are going to party tonight. And, of course, we started with a bit of a spoof. But, you know, I was watching the other night. Hardly have ever done it in my life. But, well, it was just last night, actually. They had so much pre-inauguration material. And I sat down because I knew we were going to have to get together tonight. And I was watching, they had a program evidently about Saturday Night Live. And I never watched Saturday Night Live, but I did last night. They had about a whole hour of it. And they were showing the different spoofs that they had in regards to Sarah Palin, this and that. But you know, there was something I noticed. They sure didn't spoof old Obama, did they? Did they? I don't know. Anybody watch Saturday Night Live? You ever see him spoof Obama? No, and you're not going to see him spoofing Obama in the future because that's hands off. You're not going to hear them talking about him turning the Air Force One into Watermelon One or something like that. No, sir. That's off limits for them, but nothing's off limits here when it comes to the area of truth. So welcome. Still fighting the system. The system that they've got planned for you does not have Christ at the head. It's a system of one world government. But Christ is not the head of that government. Now, it's called the kingdom message, and very few people are preaching it. But we're preaching it here at the LaPorte Church of Christ, and we're having a live broadcast right about now. Wanting you to know that Jesus Christ is king, and that he is not going to tolerate anyone being lifted up as the world is tolerating Barack Obama being lifted up right now. They don't just talk about Barack Obama meeting with someone to have a meal. They talk about breaking bread with Barack Obama. They refer to him in terms of Messiah terms. Uh, That's the worst thing they could do for Barack Obama. Well, anyway, I think we have Bill O'Reilly ready. And we got a report. We got a reporter out there in the field to give us a report about what's going on this pre-inauguration night. So, uh, Bill O'Reilly, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, Pastor. This is Bill O'Reilly. What do you got for us, Bill? Well, Pastor, I have an excellent story here about the inauguration, but I just learned something that I think everyone may find of interest. And that is that 40 years ago, again, 40 years ago, Martin Luther King, in an interview on British Broadcasting Network, said that they would have a black president in the United States within 40 years. Well, that's quite a revelation. And that was that was 40 years ago to this year, huh? Yes, it was. Well, it's very... The time he was elected, 1968 to 2008. Very appropriate. This is Martin Luther King Day. Yes, it is, and I know that you guys are celebrating not only the inauguration, pre-inauguration party, but the Have a Dream party. Yes, we're incorporating it all, Bill, and it's very kind of you to notice that. Well, this reporter has a report from the shadow of Barack Obama's Camelot coronation. Tomorrow's inauguration of Barack Obama as America's 44th president and the first non-white president in history is in itself a big story, but there is a bigger story here that many of my brethren in the news profession has chosen to ignore. The bigger story is not that the Obama children have not made their choice about which dog to bring into the White House, whether it's a purebred Portuguese water dog or a mutt mix called Labradoodle, that is a Labrador poodle mix. The bigger story is not that the polls now report that America support Obama with a whopping 79% approval. Their choice was clear, and it was that they would have to rule over them an Afro-Caucasian mix or a 
Taka Afro, also known as a black Cajun, <laughs> that cannot prove his American birthright and refuses to produce a birth certificate. The bigger story is not the fact that the Democratic Party that has stood against and railed against the rich is throwing what is called the biggest party in the history of the world, spending a staggering estimated $170 million. Nor is it that the party of the poor, the defender of the impoverished, has arranged hotel packages for the inaugural parties that go as high as $50,000 for a four-day stay. But I understand that does include a buffet. The Ritz Carlton, for example, has a package for a bargain basement price of $12,000 per night. The fact that Washington, D.C. now has a military force to protect Mr. Obama that is larger than most standing armies around the world and more than the 32,000 troops we have in Afghanistan looking for bin Laden is not the big story. 42,500 police and military will be assigned to Washington for the inauguration. No, this is not the big, big story that this reporter is speaking about. The big story is also not the fact that Obama is having an inaugural prayer from an anti-queer so-called preacher that has some queer friends and an inaugural sermon from a queer preacher that has some Christian friends. It is not the fact that there is no way in the world that all of these events, parties, big screens, fireworks, buses, hotels, food, security, bands, stages, lighting, sound, systems, and nonsense could have been planned since the November election or just over two months ago. This reporter, after consulting with people in the party and event industry, estimates that a venue of this size would take at least a year to coordinate and that it would be a full-time staff of people to plan it. Is it a conspiracy? Did they know the outcome of the election before November? The big story is not the estimated 70 miles of traffic backup expected around D.C., nor the cessation of all road construction on all roads leading to D.C. up and down the East Coast. It is not the largest, if it's not the largest party ever thrown at $170 million or more during what is deemed the worst economic collapse since the Great Depression, if that is not the big story, if it's not the gathering of millions of people to see a man that many news agency reports as only one that can save the world and has four years to do it, then what is the big story that all have missed? The big story is that I care for you, President, and all of you, my heart is bigger than a box of chocolate rich friends, movie stars, TV stars, and singers, and millions of people attending will spend an estimated 400 to $500 million to attend the swearing in of a president for an oath of office that he has no intention of keeping. This is Bill O'Reilly with your anti 11 news report in the shadow of the coordination of Barack Obama. Thank you, Bill O'Reilly. Well put. Wow, does that reporter in the field for Scriptures for America worldwide, does he tell it like it is or what? Amen. You know, he just told something to us right now. We ought to think about that. I put on a party or two, Scriptures for America family gatherings of uh, listeners. Our radio program will have a Rocky Mountain Scriptures for America, Rocky Mountain Family Bible Camp, and maybe there's a hundred, maybe there's sometimes uh, there's been up to five hundred. But you know, it takes me a couple months just to figure that out. Mm -hmm. How in the he made a good point, didn't he? How would you get all of this done in this period of time? No, they've been figuring this one out probably back there when their boy that they pushed ahead, called Martin Luther King made that statement in 40 years there'd be a black president. Well, don't you want to tip your hat to them, though, when you think about how hard they've worked, and now they're right here at the pinnacle, right where God wants them. In the next hour, you're going to find out why the Word of God says, I don't want strangers like a high yeller like Barack Obama in a position like that. 